The candidates are waiting. Who will ascend their princess to the throne first? In this video, I'll be reviewing Heart of Crown after this. Hey there, it's Theo from Geeky Gamer Guy. On this channel, I do all things board games from top five lists of a specific topic, playthroughs, reviews, hey, like this one, to how to plays, call P plays, where my shirt disappears. Where'd it go? Nobody knows. And I show you the full rules of the game at hand. So if you don't want to miss out, think about subscribing. The throne is vacant and ready for a new ruler. Let the competition begin. Heart of Crown, designed by Ginkgo and published by Japanime Games, is a deck building game for two to four players. Players will race to get their back princess to the throne first. At the beginning of the game, each player is given seven farming village cards that generate coins and three apprentice maid cards whose sole purpose is to clumsily foil players' plans. And good china. Players must first amass enough coins and some territory to be able to back a princess. To do this, they will play cards to modify their starting decks with cards bought from the market. To play cards, simply select a card from your hand and place it face up in front of you. If the card has no directional arrow, then that's the only card you can play this turn. Hmm. But if the card has at least one yellow directional arrow on it, a player can chain it with another card in their hand. Cards can be chained as many times as available to do so. From there, the player can take the coins generated to buy from the market. The market comes in two different parts. First, the static market has cards that are always available for purchase. Most give some form of currency when played, like the city card that generates two coins, or on the flip side, the senator that provides three sentient points. More on this later. The other side of the market consists of different cards pre-selected and shuffled together before the game starts. Some cards be unavailable at the beginning of the game, but eight types will always be up for purchase. After a player amasses enough wealth and land, they may want to hold off buying more cards and instead choose from the available six princesses to back. Each princess possesses their own special ability, like Princess Clam Clam who reduces the buy cost of all cards in the market by one. Oh, she got that Groupon girl. Well, Princess Lula Nasayaka gives a player a head start on Senshin by providing six Senshin points right from the start. Also, when a player backs a princess, they can place up to three territory cards to become domains and put them along with the chosen princess in front of them. The domain serves as places to reserve a card to be used on a later turn. Okay, what's up with all these Senshin points I keep going on about? They're how you win the game, silly! Now that players have backed a princess, they need to switch gears from amassing wealth to acquiring 20 Senshin points to win. After chaining cards, players may choose from those that provide Senshin points left in their hand to ascend and place next to their princess. Players can place all Senshin cards they want. The first player to 20 Senshin points triggers the coronation ceremony and the final round begins. All other players get one final turn to reach 20 Senshin. If not, the player that triggered the coronation ceremony ascends their princess and wins. Otherwise, those players that did reach 20 Senshin points race to be the first to get 30 Senshin points to win. This game is so cute and enchanting. The theme is spot on. Everything feels like players are working hard in a kingdom to ascend their chosen princess. The artwork is cuteness overload, but don't let that fool you. There are some mean cards that really add to some fun player interaction. Speaking of that, chaining the cards in your hand is pure genius. It's no longer about putting down all the cards and seeing what happens. Now you have to think about how you place them to maximize your hand. It's so satisfying to get a hand that makes a long chain. The base game alone has a wide variety of cards to give a massive amount of replayability. The rulebook has many different pre-made sets for you to play with, or you can shuffle the included randomizers to construct a unique game. I love that the box is not too big, but large enough for all the cards to be sleeved, plus room for expansions. There are also nicely labeled dividers to help organize everything. Now just like all games, there's room for improvement. While I really like the idea of reserving a card in the domains, outside of a few situations, I just didn't use it. There are a few cards that make having the cards in a domain almost pointless because they can be easily destroyed and discarded quickly. Lastly is the end game coronation ceremony. While I like that everyone gets a final chance to catch up to 20 Senshin, I don't like that there's potential for player elimination before the game is over. I would have just rather the game be a race to 20 Senshin and someone wins. 
or the final round gets triggered and another player also reaches 20 Senshin, then all players race to be the first to 30 Senshin, instead of possibly leaving players behind who now have to sit on the sidelines and watch. Don't let those things stop you from checking out this game. It is by far one of my favorite deck building games I have ever played. Rating 8 out of 10. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you want more, check out what I'm playing over on my Instagram or come and interact with me on Twitter. I'd love to connect with you. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Until next time, stay geeky. Keep gaming. Well, Lula Nasaika. Lula Nasayaka. Luna na Lula Nasayaka. La Luna Lulana Saika. La la, la Lulana Sayaka.